right, ladies and gentlemen and programmers, let's get started with Little Crab. It's going to be lesson two, and this is part one, the first of three parts. Okay, so what the first thing I want you to do is I want you to delete any of the old Little Crabs that you might have in the project. So any Crab projects that you have in your folder with your name on it, go ahead and let's delete those. Um, I don't want you to have the wrong version and get confused. Okay, so now let's get the right version. All right, so let's go to Google Classroom. And so we're going to go to Google Classroom. We're going to go to Classwork. And then here's the Lesson 2 Little Crab. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to double click on this zip folder. Okay, and there's no download here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the little hamburger right there. And we're going to say Open New Window. And now we have the Little Crab zip and we can download it. So go ahead and do that. And then we're going to show that in the folder. Okay, and so here it is in the downloads folder, little crab zip. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and we're going to say 7-zip extract here. Okay, and for me, yes, so, okay, so now we have this. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you what not to do. I'm going to press, don't, you just, you just copy this one over. Do not copy this one over. But I'm going to copy this one over because I'm going to show you what not to do. So I'm going to click on this and right click and I'm going to say copy. Okay. And then I'm going to go into my folder with my name on it. I'm going to go into creative, not creative computers. I'm going to go into intro to programming. And I'm going to go ahead and paste. Okay. And so here's the project that you need. Okay. So we're going to double click and open this. Now, let's say that you did this. Let's say that you did this. Oh, and if I asked you if to update your code, say, yes, sir. Update my code. All right. So here's the beginning of the little crowd project. Now, Let's say you worked and worked and worked for two weeks on that little crowd project. And then for some reason, somebody comes over here and says, um, says seven zip extract here. And it says, oh, do you want to delete all this right here? And you say yes to all. Well, guess what just happened to all your work? All your work just got deleted. So all that to say is in your folder with your name on it, I want the little crab folder. I do not want this zip folder. Okay, so don't put that in there. Okay. All right. Good. Just a little bit of warning there. All right. Let's keep looking at the spiel now. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, download Lesson 2 Little Crab. We did that. And then get out your notes. You should have your notes already inside a binder or a notebook. You have you have like something like this loose. That's going to get crumbled up. It's going to get put in your backpack and you're going to lose it. So it should be in a notebook or in a binder already. Okay. Let's keep going. Now, um, make a page in your notebook that says Lesson 2. Uh, your notes should be in a binder already. We just discussed that. Right. Lesson two, little crab at the top plus your name. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Now, in the first thing I want you to do is what bad thing could happen if you leave the zip file in your folder? We already answered that, but I want you to write that down in your notes. All right. Um, start Greenfoot and open the little crab scenario and place a crab into the world and run the program. Click the run button. And then um, what do you observe happens? What do you observe happens? Okay. See what, see what happens. So let's see here. So I'm going to hit the, I'm going to add a little crab myself. I'm going to hit run. And what happens? Absolutely nothing. Okay. So nothing happens. Um, why does the crab do nothing? You should know the answer to this. Why does the crab do nothing? All right. Open up the crab class definition here. Okay. So this is the crab class. If I open it up and this is the crab class definition. Now, why does the crab do nothing? Because there's no code in here. We didn't ask it to. There's no, there's no, no commands in here. Okay. Um, so we've learned two things. We learned that there's no real important instructions here in the crab. And that we learned that this, when you double click on that and look at the Java code, that's the crab class definition. All right, let's keep moving. All right. Now, whenever you see this, this sissy blue color, that means that you have to go grab the handout. So the handout is in Google Classroom or it's in the basket in the back of the room. Let's go take a look at, let's see if we can find the, I don't remember where it is. It's probably around here somewhere. Oh yeah. So if we come back here and we look right here, Project 2 Greenfoot PDF, that right there is the handout. So you can print those out. Okay. All right. Anyway, get your handouts and then I want you to write this stuff. The standard class definition defines what the crab can do. So basically from here to here teaches the crab what he can do. This is called the class signature. This is called the method signature. This is called between these brackets is called the method body. What does the class signature do? 
Okay, well, it tells us that our class is named the crab and that the crab is a subclass of animal. Okay, what does the me method, the signature tell us? Well, that says, okay, from here to here, is how we're going to teach the crab how to act. And we know that it's void, so that is a command, not a question. Um, and the method body, as I said before, is it goes from this bracket to this bracket, and it tells the crab what he's going to do over and over and over again. Okay, all right, let's make the crab move. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to make your you're going to go into the, cl the class definition and you're going to add in this move parentheses parentheses semicolon code right between these two brackets. So you have public void act parentheses parentheses opening bracket closing bracket. So in the method body, we're going to add the move method. All right, then compile it, place a, cr a crab into the world and then try clicking the act and the run buttons. What do you observe? Write that down in your notes. It's in red. Okay, place multiple crabs into the world, run the scenario, what do you observe? Okay, so write that down in your notes. So I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to go into the crab. No. It's already open. Okay. Oh, it's over here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to type in move, parentheses, parentheses, semicolon. I'm going to compile it. No syntax errors. That's good. I'm going to add one crab. What does a crab do? He moves. What if I add multiple crabs? What happens? They all move the same. Okay. So when I change the source code, when I change the class definition, every object or every instance of the class does the same thing. All right. So let's see what's up next. Okay. So again, we have this color. That means you need to get your hand out and you're going to write this. How does the crab know how to move? So I asked him to move. He could move. But if you notice, there's nowhere, I, there's nowhere in here did I teach him how to move. Where did, we, where, where did he learn how to move? Um, how do you end a command in English? And then finally, how do you end a command in Java? Okay, answer those questions. All right, and then um, and put this in on lined paper. Okay, how does the crab know how to move? Well, look, the public class crab extends animal. So the crab inherited all the, the methods from animal so that's how he knows how to do it. The crab, in, how does he know how to move? He inherited it, that, those methods. Have you ever tried to say inherited it? Inherited it, 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 it. Inherited it, 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 it. But he inherited it from his super class animal. Okay. How do you end a command in English? Do it, period, with a period. How do you end a command in Java with a parentheses, parentheses, semicolon? Okay. All right, let's keep looking. All right, move is called... Move is called a method call. It's telling the crab to do something and it knows how to do. Okay. So when you say move, you're saying, hey, do this thing right there. You're calling on the method that's written somewhere else. Method calls in in parentheses, parentheses, semi semicolon. How does it know how to move? Because it's taught it, you taught it to in the animal class. How do you end a command in English? We already answered that. Okay. Turning. Okay. So we're going to learn how to turn. So now what I want you to do is delete. By the way, that should not be a capital T. That should be a lowercase t. I want you to delete the move, and I want you to replace it with turn five, parentheses, parentheses, semicolon. Okay? All right. Replace move with turn five in your scenario. Try it out. Also try values other than five. Try like a two. Try like a ten. And see what it looks like. All right. What do the different numbers do? So if I change it from a five to a ten, what's the difference? How do you make the crab turn left? What is the five part called? What does the five part do? Answer those questions. Hit pause and answer those questions. All right, let's see what this thing does. So if I change this from move to turn five, okay, and then I compile that, and then I come over here and I, okay, I add a crab. Now what's he going to do? He turns. Let's see what happens if I change that from five to 25. Compile that and let's see what he does. He's going to let's add a new crab and he's going to turn faster. Now, the question is, how do I get him to turn left? Well, if I put in five and he turns five degrees, well, how can I get him to go the other direction? Well, I'd say negative five degrees. Okay, so it's all in degrees. Let's compile that. Okay, and let's see what happens. Add in my little crabby and I hit run and now he goes the opposite direction. All right. Um, okay, hopefully you know what the five part is called and you know what the five part does. The five part is called the parameters. 
what does it do? It allows you to pass in data. So like when I say turn, it's like, well, how many degrees do you want me to turn? So you have to pass in additional data. All right. So what's the five part called parameter? What does it do? It passes in additional data. So for example, when I say, hey, you need to jump and you're going to say, well, Mr. Miller, how high would you like me to jump? That's the parameter. I have to give you additional data for you to follow that command. All right. Now, this means you have a handout. So make sure you write this particular note right directly on the handout. Okay. So eventually, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say move and turn together. Okay. So what you need to know is that multiple instructions are executed in sequence, one after the other. So it's going to move first, then turn. So that's how most uh, coding languages work. Okay. Um, so you can use a move and a turn. And, and by the way, n is the number of degrees. So turn five or whatever you like um, in your crab's act method. Try different values for n. Okay. Try different values for five. What does it do? Well, let's figure, why don't you try to figure that out and I'll try to figure it out. Okay. So we're going to move first. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to say move parentheses, parentheses, semicolon. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go edit. Uh, auto layout, or you can press Control Shift I, and it makes everything kind of nicer to look at. I like to do that. Okay, now let's see what it let's see what it does. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna come over. No, that wasn't it. Come on, come on, you can do it. Okay, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna add in a crab. What does he do? So we run it, and now instead of just spinning in circles, he like goes into a, a circle. Okay, so. And we can try different values. You, you kind of have an idea of what that will do. Let's hit pause. Let's go back to the spiel here. What does it do? Oh, okay. Here we go. Error messages. Okay, write all this down. When a class is compiled, the compiler checks to see whether there are any error messages. If an error is found, an error message is displayed. Okay. Um, so there's another thing you can do. So you can have code that the compiler understands but it's going to do something that you didn't intend. So for example, if your guy is like right here at the edge of the cliff, right? And you say, move, move, move. Ah, he's going to fall off the cliff and die. Well, he, the computer no, understands move, 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 right? But you might not have intended him to fall off the cliff. So you gave him instructions that he understood, but it wasn't the logic that you had intended. Okay. Um, so let's take a look. Remove the semicolon after move and then compile. Also experiment with other errors such as misspelling move or making other random changes to code. Find at least three different error messages. Write down each error message and what change you introduced to, to this method. So for example, so if we come over here and I get rid of one of the brackets and I hit compile, it's going to say error. Where do I, how do I get to it? I click right there and it says illegal start of expression. It doesn't it doesn't like that. So if I put that back, and if I spell move, move, and it's going to do the same thing. Um, so if I click right here on the red, cannot find this. It doesn't know the method move. It knows how to move, but it doesn't know how to move very well. Okay. So you guys can do that. Um, all right. Here's the quiz. Here's the quiz. What is this called? And what does it do? What is this called? And what does it do? What is this called and what does it do? Okay, and the answer is this is the, well, you do it. I'm not going to tell you. You can go back to the beginning and figure it out. I already told you. All right, what do you call it when you tell a crab to do something it already knows how to do, such as move or turn? What do you call it when a program follows instructions in order, one after the other? What do you call a little message at the bottom telling you that you did something wrong? If you don't know those, you better ask me in person. All right, so we're going to go on to part two on the next video.